Hello and welcome back to C.S. Wilson Talks. I'm C.S. Wilson. And depending on when you're watching this, Happy New Year! I kind of wanted to get something out before the end of the year and it's not quite the end of the year yet. Today is December 30th, 2018 and uh, I wanted to get a video out because it's been about a month or so since I put a video out so I apologize about that. But uh, I have been kind of busy in the office and with stuff in general. I'm getting one out now. I wanted to get one out before the end of the year. That was kind of my goal. Actually, I had more goals than that for this year, but you know how it goes. A few of the things I want to talk about are some upgrades that I've made to the printer, some upgrades I've made to the office, maybe even some things that I still haven't gotten to yet. To start off with, let's talk about the 3D printer and something that I noticed from the last video that I made, the last vlog that I made. I didn't really say what the printer was. Uh, I probably should though because it's really good. From the unboxing video, this is the printer that I that I have. It is the Adam Labs uh, 3D printer, uh, 300 by 300 by 400, or I believe it's 310 by 310 by 410. 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 410 millimeters. So it's kind of the big one. Uh, at any rate, I'll put a link to that in the video description below if you want to go check it out. So it's a really good printer. Uh, I haven't had any problems with it in terms of the printer itself. I've had user problems because I'm new to 3D printing, so I don't know a lot about it. But I learned on this one. So this one's kind of special. It has a, has a special place in my heart. But essentially, a lot of the problems that I did have were problems that I generated and that have all been resolved. And, and actually, once I got it back to the way that it was because of the things that I screwed up on it, it worked really well and continues to work really well. But I'll talk about that here in just a minute. The other thing that I happened to notice uh, from my last vlog, I think I said that I, was, I ran out of filament and I was going to have to buy some more filament. And uh, so I did that kind of in a big way. That's all filament. There's some there, too. Oh yeah, and there's one on the printer. So I may have went a little overboard with the filament, but I don't think so because it's not actually about the amount of filament that you have. It's about all the colors and the different types of filament. For example, I have about equal amounts of PLA as I do PETG. And I also have one spool of TPU, which I tried to use, but I was having some trouble with it, so I stopped using it. At least for at least for now. On another video that I made, which was on the Tush, the ultimate spool holder, I ended up getting a remix version of that because the original one uh, did not work so awesome on this particular printer because I have a direct drive printer, and that means that the filament goes directly down into where it gets pulled from right here. Having it come off the side like it did didn't work so well with this particular type of printer. Instead, I downloaded this one right here, which is a remix of the exact same thing, and it just snaps on there. And to make things a lot easier, I also printed this out, which is just a simple filament guide just to keep things in line. I still have the original Tush down here. Just a basket of uh, failed prints. There it is. There's another one down in there. I need to take the bearings out of this. Another upgrade that I made, which is the gantry bracing, uh, which are the two rods that are on either side there. This one here and uh, this one here. They attach up here with brackets and uh, these attach to the frame and then the threaded rod, which is a 716 threaded rod, attaches to that with double nuts. And there's also one down at the bottom that also attaches to the frame. It has a single nut here, a captured nut right in here. And that really helps with the stability of this particular frame. In addition to that, I also have this huge chunk of wood right here, which is actually uh, some butcher block countertop. So I cut it into a slab. This is about 24 inches by 24 inches, about an inch and a half thick or so. And that also helps deaden a lot of the vibrations. I did put these little uh, pads down here made from shelf liner or uh, the uh, toolbox liner that I have. So as far as upgrades go, that pretty much sums up the most obvious ones. And I'm still not done with these because there's this big chunk that's sticking up on each side and I, I need to trim those down which I'll do at some point. I mean there's really no need to do that right away. Who knows if I cut those off maybe it won't work as well anymore. Sometimes these machines can be fickle that way. I did order a few smaller upgrades and I'll be installing those at some point here in the future. All in an effort to get better prints. That's what it's all about. It's what I live for now. And now on to some of the things that aren't quite so obvious. So the first thing is actually a fix and an upgrade, which is the temperature sensor for the heater block. The original one that came with it uh, got damaged, so I had to replace it, so I might as well upgrade it. Unlike the original one, this one screws in, so it's uh, less likely to get damaged. The original temperature sensor got damaged because I had the... Uh, the extruder and the nozzle were down in the home position, so they were lower than this. 
I then moved this table this way while the printer was on and while the heater was on as well. And as it came across, that clip made contact with the existing thermocouple that was in here and shorted it out. As you can see, I no longer have the top clip on here. I've also removed some of the others as well. So there was a little spark and a puff of smoke and I thought that would be the end of it and that I would just have to replace the thermocouple and I would be done. But it turns out that whenever that shorted out, it actually damaged the temperature sensor protection circuit in a pretty major way. Let me show you. This is the board that came with the unit. And as you can see, it looks pretty normal until you get to right that tiny little piece right there. That's the protection circuit. And I was using heater one because that's what they say to use. And so I also noticed that on the board there's a heater two. So I thought, well, I can use this one instead. I actually went to the Atom Labs uh, group in Facebook and asked some people in there to help me out. How can I fix this? What can I do about it? And I got a lot of good suggestions. One of them was to actually take and switch from heater one to heater two, which is what I was wanting to do, and then just change the software over uh, so that it would read uh, heater two instead of heater one. And that didn't actually work because on this particular board, there is no uh, stepper motor driver for the extruder on heater two, which makes heater two kind of useless. However, everything else pretty much works on it. So I had the idea to just jump her across from heater one to heater two for the extruder. So on the back of the board here, this is heater one, this is heater two, just jump her across the four leads that I needed for the extruder. And keep in mind that I had already ordered the new board, so it was on its way. Customer service for these printers is actually phenomenal. Anyway, this solution worked for actually quite a while until the new board came. And I had actually contemplated just continuing to use this board because there really wasn't anything wrong with it and it, it was working pretty decent. But I decided to just go ahead and put the new board in. So there was also another issue with the printer that I had, but it was minor. I was having trouble with the bed heating and it wasn't heating up properly. I was also getting errors like uh, heat temperature runaway or something like that. And I still get those every now and then. I'll normally heat the bed to around 50 to 60 degrees Celsius for PLA and then anywhere from 70 to 85 degrees for pet G. So now whenever I try to go anything above say 80 or 85 degrees in that range, sometimes I'll get a temperature runaway error. And what's really cool about this part of the story is I contacted Joseph at uh, Atom Labs and eventually it was determined that there was a problem with the heated bed. So he just simply sent out a new one and it's sitting right there. I just haven't installed it yet, but that's going to be for another day. Maybe I'll do a little video on that later. I don't know. I hate to make promises like that. I mean, honestly, I still haven't found a place to put my paper shredder. So that kind of wraps up the new stuff for the printer and the printer upgrades and the printer fixes. And I don't know if you've seen around the office here in the shots, there's a lot of 3D printed stuff so far. Mostly what I'm doing with it now is just printing things so I can get a feel for the printing and also getting all the settings dialed in, you know, just generally tinkering, which I kind of enjoy. If you don't like to tinker, you probably won't like 3D printing, unless you want to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for a printer. Even then, I think they probably still have the same problems. So looking around, you can kind of see some of the things. Uh, the Starship Enterprise, which I like, that was one of my first prints. Uh, there's a 3D Benchy, which uh, I printed out several of those. This was my first uh, multicolor print, so that's neat. This is uh, Phil from Matter Hackers. This is actually some new PLA that I just got. That was actually some inexpensive filament that I got from Amazon, which is where I get all of my filament. There's another 3D Benchy and some dust. Don't mind that. Yikes. And that was the first vase that I printed. This is basically just a single extrusion all the way from the bottom to the top. I think it turned out nice. And I also forgot to mention that I do have some uh, part storage bins. I bought those here locally just because there's a lot of little pieces and parts that you get with the uh, 3D printer. So you kind of need stuff like that. Which also houses another little 3D printer project, which are these right here. This is a spool clip for the uh, Amazon basic filament that I buy. And I have one in action right here. Just clips onto the side there and uh, holds the filament. That's the Amazon Basics uh, Pet G, but they all have the same exact spool. So in other office related news, I did get a new monitor and I didn't add it to my monitor collection. Uh, basically, I replaced the one that I had. Originally, I was using a 27 inch 2K monitor, uh, 2560 by 1440 turned in portrait mode. And that was sitting next to my 4K monitor in the landscape mode, which is my main monitor, obviously. So what I really wanted was another 4K monitor to sit beside the big 4K monitor in portrait mode. And that's what I did here. 
it's another LG monitor, this one over here. So believe it or not, that's a 32 inch monitor, but then again, that's a 43 inch monitor. And that's basically what they look like when they're on. I don't know why I didn't have them on before. I also got this little guy that I'm gonna be doing some uh, projects with here pretty soon. Ugh, the dust. I actually bought that and I unboxed it and I started to do a review on it and then I don't know what happened. I just stopped. I think that was when I got busy. That was right about the time I got busy. I'm sure of it. That's pretty much it. Uh, just a quick office vlog. I just wanted to show some of the things I've been doing with the printer and some other little office upgrades that I've made. I still have more things that I need to do in the future as far as 3D printing goes and also also with the office one of which is finding a place to keep all of this stuff yeah I'm, I'm out of control other than that everything's been going pretty smooth and uh, I hope to be making more videos in the future of course I think I say that every time I always hope to make more videos sometimes I just don't get around to it I apologize for that but hey there's a new year coming up so who knows and with that I would just like to say happy new year I hope everything goes well for you I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Such a YouTube nerd. Smash that like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.